Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to talk about heart murmurs. Maybe you have heard this term before, maybe you've even been diagnosed with one, and you've been wondering what exactly does it mean? In today's video, we are going to talk about how it happens and what it is while looking at the anatomy of the heart to find out exactly what is going on. Before we get into the video, we will quickly go over the disclaimer. The doctor in my name comes from the PhD I earned. I am not a medical doctor. My videos and content are for educational and informational purposes only. This is not to be used in lieu of medical advice, but to educate you. If you have a true medical emergency or issue, please see your physician. In order to better understand what a heart murmur is, let's take a look at the anatomy of the heart. The heart has four chambers, the right atrium and the left atrium, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. These chambers are used to pump blood through the heart. If you want more on that, I have a video on how blood pumps through the heart, which you can see by clicking on the link in my description box. The heart also has several valves that allow blood to flow through the heart in the right direction. They are the tricuspid valve, which is also known as an atrioventricular valve. It is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Another atrioventricular valve, called the mitral valve or bicuspid valve, is found between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And then there are two semilunar valves, we have one right here going from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk. That valve is referred to as the pulmonary semilunar valve. And then the other one right here, which is going from the left ventricle into the aorta, known as the aortic semilunar valve. It's important to have a general understanding of how the heart is set up and where these valves are so that you can better understand what a heart murmur is. Again, I've dropped that link in the description box for how blood flows through the heart. So if you want to take a look at that later to connect the dots, if you don't really understand how blood flows through the heart, you can follow along with that video and understand that better. Heart murmurs are defined as extra sounds made by the heart. They can be heard during an exam using a stethoscope. A normal heartbeat makes two sounds, lub, dub. The lub, or S1 sound, is louder and longer. It is associated with the closing of the atrioventricular valves. The dub, or S2 sound, is shorter and not as loud. It is associated with the closure of the semilunar valves. So in a normal heartbeat, you would normally hear lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. If you want to learn more about the heart, and how the heart works and a more in-depth description on heart sounds, see my video on the cardiovascular system, the heart. I will link the video in the description box below. If there is an extra sound other than lub-dub, 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 which is usually a whooshing or swishing sound, then it is considered a heart murmur. Some murmurs can be present at birth and are referred to as congenital murmurs, while others can develop later in life. These are referred to as acquired murmurs. Most murmurs are harmless and referred to as innocent murmurs. However, murmurs should be checked out to make sure whether or not they are innocent or indicative of a heart problem. Often, murmurs don't have any other symptoms. The physician will notice upon a physical exam that the heart is making an extra sound. However, there are times when symptoms can be present and should be checked out immediately by a physician. These symptoms can include trouble breathing, shortness of breath, bluish lips or skin, sweating, chest pain, and fainting. There are three different types of heart murmurs that are classified based on when they happen during a heartbeat. The first type are called systolic murmurs. These murmurs happen when your heart muscle contracts. The second type, referred to as diastolic murmurs, happen when your heart muscle relaxes. 
and the third type are called continuous murmurs. These heart murmurs happen during both contraction and relaxation of your heart. Diastolic and continuous murmurs are more likely related to heart disease. However, again, all murmurs should be evaluated by a physician. Now that we know a little bit more about what a heart murmur is, let's talk about what causes a heart murmur. A heart murmur is caused by either turbulent or abnormal blood flow across your heart valves. Remember those valves we talked about at the beginning of the video? that allow blood to flow in the proper direction through the heart. If blood flows faster than normal, it can cause an innocent heart murmur. Remember, an innocent heart murmur are those that are in healthy individuals and pose no issue. These murmurs are common during childhood, exercise, growth spurts, pregnancy, and the first few days after a baby is born. Innocent murmurs can come and go. Sometimes they last a lifetime. These innocent murmurs, just like they sound, don't indicate a problem with your heart. Let's talk about some possible problems that can cause heart murmurs. Leaky heart valve can cause a heart murmur. When heart valves are functioning properly, they are going to close tightly when they are supposed to during a heartbeat. Remember, there's four valves that are located in the heart. I mentioned it before. When the heart is beating properly and blood has passed through them, they close. This prevents blood from going backwards. So we want blood to continue to move through the heart in the proper direction. And so those heart valves are gonna close tightly to do that. However, sometimes a heart valve can become damaged and it doesn't shut entirely. When this happens, it is referred to as a leaky heart valve. And when this happens, uh, as blood is moving through the heart and those heart valves close, because this heart valve doesn't close all the way, blood can leak backwards through that valve when it should have gone forward through the heart. What happens then is that this is going to create the sound of blood swooshing backwards, creating an extra sound in the heart. Another issue with the heart valves that can lead to a heart murmur are referred to as narrowed heart valve. Now, this is the opposite issue. When blood is flowing through the heart valve, this narrowed heart valve is going to create an issue. Um, what happens is that the heart valve can become stiff and narrow over time, then it doesn't open fully all the way, and then it gives an issue now when blood is flowing through that valve. It's actually going to be obstructing the blood flow. It could even make it take longer for the blood to pass through the valve. More pressure could be needed to get it to move forward because of this narrowing. And as that happens, uh, what's going to be heard is this sound of blood moving uh, more forcefully through this narrow opening, and that can create uh, an abnormal heart murmur. Another possible problem that can cause a heart murmur is a hole in the heart wall. Sometimes a baby is born with a hole in the wall between the right atrium and the left atrium, those two upper chambers. Many times this hole will close. Sometimes it won't needing surgical intervention, but having that hole opening between the two chambers is going to create an extra sound. In adults, um, some adults may develop a hole after a heart attack or a surgery. And again, if the blood is leaking between this abnormal opening between heart chambers, um, it will cause an abnormal sound within the heart leading to a heart murmur. Some murmurs are due to heart problems or other conditions. These conditions can include anemia, which is low iron that leads to a low red blood cell count. This is going to affect blood viscosity, which is the thickness of the blood. So thicker blood is going to have much more difficulty traveling through the heart, causing extra sounds. Carcinoid syndrome. Carcinoid syndrome is a slow growing tumor caused by extra hormones that can also cause a heart murmur. Congenital heart defect, which are structural issues in the heart that have been there since birth. 
Endocarditis is an infection of the heart. This actually attacks your heart valves and again can lead to a heart murmur. Heart valve disease. This is where one or more of the heart valves aren't working correctly. And again, if a heart valve isn't working correctly, then this is going to prevent good blood circulation through the heart and could lead to extra sounds in the heart. Hyperthyroidism, which is an overactive thyroid or too much thyroid hormone, can actually cause a rapid heartbeat. And the faster the heart beats, the more chance there could be of an abnormal sound. And hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This makes your heart muscle larger, thicker, or stiffer. Again, if there's any changes to the heart itself, as blood is pumping through the heart, it could cause an extra heart sound or heart murmur. If a healthcare provider hears a murmur upon examination, they will refer you to a cardiologist who may order additional tests to rule out a heart issue. These tests can include a chest x-ray, which takes a picture of your heart to look for structural problems, an echocardiogram, which is basically an ultrasound of your heart to look at the valves of the heart, the chambers, and the pumping action of the heart and make sure that everything is working properly. And uh, finally, an electrocardiogram, better known as an ECG or EKG. This test is going to measure the electrical activity of your heart. How to prevent a heart murmur. There is actually no way to prevent a heart murmur. The best thing to do is have regular checkups with your physician where you are fully evaluated. If you are having regular yearly checkups, then if your doctor hears something out of the ordinary, then the physician can refer you for further tests. Early intervention is key to finding out what, what might be causing the issue. And if you have any of the symptoms discussed, do not hesitate to make an appointment for evaluation sooner than your yearly physical. Thank you so much for watching my video and gaining a better understanding of how your body works. If you like this video and the content of my channel, please subscribe and support me. Make sure to also click on the notification bell so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.